Welcome to Artists in Residences, the Westport Library's virtual artist series. I'm Carol Erger Fass, and I'm exhibit curator at the library. It's crazy that this marks our one year anniversary of this program. And I hope you've been as fascinated as we've been uh, getting a look behind the scenes at the many private studio spaces of our extended Westport artist community. And with that, today, Migs takes us to the studio of artist Dale Najarian. After getting her BFA from Moore College of Art and Design in Philadelphia, Dale worked as a graphic designer and art director in New York City, Washington, and Philly. When her family relocated to Singapore, they traveled extensively, and Dale's photographs taken during this time has been a source of inspiration for many of her landscape paintings. Over her career, Dale has worked in several mediums, including watercolor, acrylics, mixed media and oils. And throughout her passion for photography and documenting her experiences has been an important part of the creative process. Dale describes using her eye for composition to literally see the painting within the photo she's taking. And using it as a guide, she captures the dramatic light and shadows that eventually become her realistic yet dreamlike paintings. In her recent shadow series, you can really see how this all comes together. Now let's join Migs and Dale in her Westport studio, and she can tell us more about it. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, I get to look into Dale Nigerian's studio. I've known Dale for a while, and she's one of the, uh, we call ourselves toasters, which are really board of directors of the Artist Collective of Westport. Um, I've been to your house, but I don't think I've ever been to your studio. Other people have, but I've. Oh, um, sorry, so. Megs. No, this is my, <laughs> I get to do it all by myself. So, <laughs> but uh, thank you for letting us in. I just want to start off by showing um, one piece of your work that I own. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I mean, I'm really, shadows fascinate me anyway. Um, they're very um, cinematic. You know, and they just they lend themselves to all sorts of interpretations. I mean, with this piece in particular, I also like where there's a lot left to the imagination. Like, you know, are they are they holding hands? Are they separating? Is he reaching for her? Is she reaching for him? Are that you know? I'm overthinking it all, but I love. There's a lot of storytelling going on there that you know. Yeah, well, I love, and I agree with you. I mean, shadows is. Um, People who know me know that I'm kind of obsessed with them. Uh, not only am I obsessed with the, the relationship between actual objects and light and the shadow, but the, the drama of the, the shadow. It's very dramatic. Um, it's very, I usually do high contrast shadows. And even if I'm not doing my shadow paintings, which I'll get into later, um, I, I use the concept of that um, throughout all, all my paintings, really, and uh, throughout the history of how I've grown as a painter. And it's not until um, uh, I look back at some of the paintings that I've done, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and like the some of the uh, watercolor that I've done and I realized that wow I was really focused on the shadows even back then not even realizing yeah. it well so. they're very, they're very cinematic too I mean you know film noir and even beyond I mean when you see a shadow, sometimes you see a shadow enter the room before the person and it's just it's very dramatic like you said but um but you didn't start there with shadows you started with what what, what well first of all do you have an art background in terms of your family? Were you exposed to art as a kid or anything? You know, I, my mom was always very creative. Um, and I took to art in high school more than, than um, before that. And I think because I was not a great student and I was really good at art and, <laughs> and I really excelled in it. And then I decided to go to a four-year art college and got my um, Bachelor of Fine Art degree in graphic design. And again, that kind of goes with all of what's built up my 
uh, painting career is that if you look at my work, it, it has a very graphic element to it. Um, so composition is really important to me. Um, and a lot of times when I do use my photography, I will um, use composition of my photography and edit it and change it before I even start painting it. And um, so I think that that all has had a, an impact on, on what I'm doing now. Oh, definitely. Yeah, your composition yeah. is so, and that pulls you in even before you know maybe what the subject matter is. There's just this very intriguing, you know, look to it and um, structure of which you, you structure things really well. But um, yeah. So where did you, did you want to sort of start where you, you it, with your, uh, you've changed styles a lot, medium? So yeah, I did start actually about 20 years ago, painting in watercolor. And I really loved watercolor. Um, this is, I did a lot of uh, figure painting. Um, you know, I, I took classes at Silvermine. I did live model painting, which is a real challenge um, with watercolor because again, with that focus on the light, like the white part of the body is the paper. So I'm not mm. even touching that. So you're kind of creating the shape around, um, I'm almost painting the shadow part and leaving the, the light, which I, I end up um, transferring to my oil paints as well. So this, this is another um, watercolor that, this is one of my first ones. I used to paint with the Pink House Painters, um, Arlene Scutch and in Westport, and that was a great group of uh, people that uh, painted in all different mediums. And um, so that, so I took that and I translated it to, um, I started uh, oil paint with when I was painting at, at Arlene's. Um, so this is another uh, watercolor. So I'm getting, uh, there's a little reflection there. So let me show you this one. Mm. So this one, um, I'm using elements of, uh, you know, pencil and pen, and then just using kind of an abstract, but it, it looks like a landscape to me. That's kind of what I was trying to do. Um, so, and I think I gave you a couple of watercolors to show as well. A woman sitting in a chair and, and there's the fish, which are kind of a Japanese in influence. Did you have that? Was that? Yeah. So we spent some time abroad as, as expats in Singapore. And I took a Chinese brush painting class with, uh, which I didn't even know it at the time was like a master in Chinese brush. painting. <laughs> so he taught us very traditional ways of using pen and ink, um, in the, in the way that, uh, you know, they, they did in the history of, you know, Asian um, mm. pen and ink and Chinese brush painting. And this is all on um, rice paper. And that was really fun. And then I, you know, years later, um, when I was doing um, oil painting, I was wondering, wow, I really loved creating those koi fish. So then I translated that to um, oils. So this is my first, mm. I did a koi series. So this is my first oil painting of a koi fish and which is to date my favorite. Um, mm, I love that. Yeah. yeah, I won't sell this one. I just love this painting. And it was so, it, it looks as spontaneous as it was. Um, mm. Yeah, the tail so squishing. Was, yeah, it's got so much. Yeah, it has a lot of like movement, which is, the, the Chinese brush painting, that's what it is. Like you're really just moving your brush and making a mark on the, on the paper. What prompts you to shift gears sort of and go from one thing to another? You just sort of w wear out your interest and, or, or just you're just excited by a new medium or how does that work? You know, I, it's funny because when I was putting together the studio to kind of show my different work, um, I couldn't believe how many different styles <laughs> and different series that I've created. And I think they all look 
it, uh, unified in a way because I'm the artist, but they are very different. And I think it's because I do um, like a challenge and I like to move on to something else. But it's interesting because even when I do go on to something else, I end up going back to that. So for instance, I did landscapes for a long time, forever. And they were a huge, you know, I sold a lot of landscapes. They were very popular. People love my kind of abstract landscapes. They're great for your home. And, and I just started getting tired of painting the landscapes. So I moved on to something else. And that's when I did, you know, the shadow paintings and, um, you know, now I'm doing abstract, but because I'm learning new processes in the other, uh, the, the other ways that I'm creating art, I bring it back and use it again for the landscapes and that makes it different mm. and it makes it more exciting. So I'm kind of, it, it's, it keeps evolving and keeps going around the more that I learn about, um, you know, new mediums and the process. It's, it's very process driven for me. And what's your next, what was your next uh, chapter trees? So I started doing landscapes and the, the more that I did, I loved doing trees. So this is a more recent one. This is an actual commission that I did. And um, this is an, this is an image that I've actually mm. used several times for different paintings. I, I did one that I painted on linen that is, you know, more warm tones. This is um, a color palette that the, um, the person I created it for had something specific in mind. Um, but again, I love, if, you know, it's, it's very dramatic with the, mm. with the light and the shadows. And um, here's, I don't want to go too fast, but Here's another um, tree painting. And again, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just representational in, in my work. I, I really, I love the abstract quality, but the fact that people know what they're looking at at the same time. Mm. So it's comfortable and familiar to you, but um, it's not an exact, you know, representation no. of like fall trees. It's simplified. Yeah. And also it combines like the geometry of the tree trunks with just this kind of, uh, yeah, the more, the looser foliage. Right. Reinterpret. And do you use a palette knife? There's all, I love the same texture of the paint. Yeah. Well, this, so this is my newest tree painting here. And this is again, like I started doing these abstract paintings where I'm painting and then taking away and I love, you know, what that looks like. So this is exactly, yeah, I used a, um, it's like a, a rubber scraping tool. Mm. And you can kind of see how I just scrape the paint away to create the trunks. Mm. And so, and it's kind of like a stained canvas underneath. So oh. isn't that cool? I mean, it really yeah. looks like a birch tree. So that's all, okay, so the trunks are, yeah, it does. So you, those are just pe the canvas being revealed after you scrape away what you've layered on, right? Yeah, exactly. Very so um, most of my work is very layered, you know, multi-layers, wait for it to dry, then scrape it again. And, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a process. Um, so for example, like this painting here, this is a really uh, a large one, like 40 by 60 landscape. And it's called Hidden Sun because I painted it over. I love painting over paintings too, which- <laughs> <laughs> Over your own? <laughs> some artists do. Yeah, they're always my own. Um, some artists do and some artists think it's taboo. I just, I love it because the colors underneath so this was a, I believe I, I did a, um, this was a tree painting underneath that was not working for me. So I painted over the entire thing using all this texture. And then if you look mm. real close under here, like that's my little hidden sun. So that mm. is the orange and yellow and kind of earth tones that are coming out underneath 
Yeah. Also, I mean, it's sort of neat that this painting has like a, a secret life underneath it that the viewer wouldn't necessarily know, but it definitely informs what the painting looks like, you know, that there's this other whole. Well, the thing I love about it too is, I mean, I could have painted this painting and then on top of it, painted those colors. Yeah. But the colors are actually from underneath. Hmm. So to me, that that is just, I love doing that. Yeah. yeah, so back to the photography element. Um, and Migs, you, you have a couple of the photos, um, sorry, the, the paintings that you can show, but this is, this is one of the um, yeah, photos street, that I've used. The street scene. Yeah, the street photo mm -hmm, yeah. that I've used several times for some of the paintings. So this is my interpretation of that photo. Mm. So I take the photo and I, um, I do, you know, very high contrast. And then I, I crop the photo. And a lot of times, let me see if I can find it. Like I'm still Xeroxing stuff. And, and first <laughs> of all, the fact that it's called Xerox is old school. But <laughs> yeah. so, um, so this is the whole photo. Mm hmm. And then I fold it into a little tiny square until I find the right composition. And that's what I paint. Oh, okay. So, and I think you have an image of a painting that I yeah. used from, from this actual photo. Yeah, you know, abstracted a little bit, but the lighting is, you know, you, the contrast is emphasized, you know. Yeah. And so this is another painting um, mm -hmm. that I did. Uh, this is one of my newer ones, kind of part of the barn series that um, I took on a trip when I was in Morocco and I took a bunch of photos and the lighting was incredible there. And this was just a stairway going down into um, kind of a lower level. And I took the photo and I, here's the photo. Oh, so it was just some, where was it? Just going to a club or a dingy Yeah, it was cellar? going to like a lower level somewhere. I don't, we didn't go down it. <laughs> yeah, oh, but you um, romanticized it a little bit. Yeah, Yeah. so <laughs> it, during COVID, you know, I had a hard time um, creating during COVID. Some, some artists were very prolific and some were not. And I was one of those that was, I, it was hard for me to get in the studio. Mm -hmm. So when I started this painting, my vision was going down into something dark. Mm -hmm. And then I put it away for a while. And after the vaccine came out um, and things started to look up, I finished the painting and I really envisioned us coming out into the sunlight. So it was mm -hmm. really interesting that, you know, my perspective on the whole painting changed. So now it's, um, you know, coming into the light is, is the name of the painting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that slab of white. Yeah, and, and the viewer's perspective would be whatever they're bringing to it. And that's now, yeah, it's amazing how that would change under the circumstances. Now there's hope and some optimism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so I want to start, this is a good segue into mm -hmm. my shadow painting series. So I'm going to walk over here. So this is um, one of my shadow paintings. And, and this is a perfect example of how I took photography. So this is, this is a photograph that I took in New York. Um, and so I, I took an actual photo that looked exactly like this painting. And the process is what's so incredible for me. So I took the painting and when I, um, when I reduced it down, I, I, I had this envision of projecting images onto work and painting them. And I did a project in college and I never got the project out of my mind. And it was, um, and it was kind of a leap of faith, but it was one of those things that I had been thinking about for years and finally decided to try it. So I created an underpainting, 
which is just like an abstract painting of like colors and stuff. And I took the photograph that I took of a city scene and I projected that onto the dried canvas in the pitch black of my studio. So I really couldn't see anything except the light that was projecting onto the canvas. And then I would kind of paint around the ray of light and I would only paint the light parts. So the abstract colors were actually the dark part of the photo. And I started doing that and the process became so fun that um, I really couldn't stop. So I bought um, blackout shades for my studio because it really has to be pitch black. And the fun part is, is I never know what it's gonna turn out to be until I turn the lights on. That's wild. It's sort of the completely the opposite of the brush paintings where you said that the, 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 uh, the light is the paper showing through and here you're painting the light, right? And letting the shadows show through. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm painting um, and I've, I've started to play a little bit in the beginning. I only used white as the, the light part. And now I'm using different, you know, colors and textures and tones and stuff. But um, it's it's super fun. And um, I think I'm going to start doing them again because I, I started them about two years ago and I, I did it for only about a year, 18 months. And then I kind of moved on to something else, but now I'm, I think I'm going to come back to it because it, it's super fun. Now, I'm just curious because I know, you know, your husband, Pete's a, mu a great musician, has a great band, Tom Petty tribute band, but do you listen to music you listen to his music or any music when you turn out the lights just to get you in the mood or do you need complete silence to do your thing? You know, I, when I listen to music, it, it, it is all different, but I also don't mind um, not listening to anything because sometimes it, it's almost like if you're studying, sometimes you can study the music and sometimes you can't. Um, you know, you really do have to kind of concentrate and focus. So sometimes music helps that. Um, and sometimes, you know, it has to be kind of like focused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's more of a meditation in a way. Yeah. So what? So that led you. So what was next in this? So you did shadows, and did that lead to anything? Or you're on something new now, right? You're. So this is oh. my newest abstract work. Wow, and it's really different for you. Okay. I know yeah. the color palette's kind of the same. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, I started. I was really interested in um, different textures and a different process. So I started with this little piece and it was by accident. This is a, this is a piece on wood mm -hmm. and I did some kind of abstract shapes on it and it was still wet and I had some cellophane from like a package that I crumpled up and I just put it on there. And when I pulled it off, it created all this like cool texture, which was almost like a block print. Um, isn't that so cool? Yeah. It's yeah. A, I mean, there's a lot of energy. I mean, not, you know, the shadows have energy and the, a lot of things have this kind of almost, uh, I don't know, lurking energy behind it, but this is just, you know, very, just totally blatantly energetic and yeah, yeah. and um. and so i also took a, again i did this one process in college that i loved and it was watered down rubber cement that you paint with hmm. and then you paint over it and then you peel up this the rubber cement and then it leaves the areas that you know the rubber cement was on so i tried that there and so I ended up doing that here and all of these marks that are- um, Look like drips, those drip scribbles, drips. Yeah, that's actually from underneath the painting. That's not on top. Oh. So the, the painting looked um, 
like just full color. And then I took a, a tool. I mean, I use the, the term loosely tool. <laughs> I ended up using, I literally, um, I, I used a sock that I had on my foot, literally. <laughs> Were you, wearing, were you wearing it at the I time? Couldn't be, I couldn't get anything to like pick up the rubber cement underneath. Yeah. So I literally took my socks off. And oh. um, and then it was such a surprise to see what was, mm. you know, coming out underneath. I mean, there's just so much like gorgeous. Yeah, there's, no, it's so great to get up close to it. Yeah, because you yeah. appreciate the. the yeah. Uh, and so to me again i'm like shoot i'm starting another series <laughs> yeah. um that i i absolutely love and this is on a wood panel i do love painting on wood as well as canvas but the wood um i just love that uh there's no resistance from the canvas it's just a yeah that's you know, that's interesting because we did a uh, one of our interviews with Sherry Wolfgang and I'm sure other artists, you know, said they love the, the push, the way the canvas pushes back, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's all, you know, it's it's all relative sure. to whatever the artist is is doing. So. Well, that's excellent. Anyway, so that's the I, first in the series. So we're priv we're privy to this first in the series of this. Yeah, year. pretty much. Okay. I, I do have to frame this one, but um, I, I'm. I have the idea of going really big on these abstract. And for some reason, I, I have done several, but this is so far the one that's like coming together, but I've, the the whole circle theme just keeps mm. resonating with me. I don't know why. So I'm- um, Well, that's cool. Well, we want to yeah. talk about your, you, you're exhibiting and I, well, first I'll, I'll plug, cause you're in it. So I'll plug the, our, the Artist Collective has a virtual 3D immersive interactive exhibit online, which is very cool. And your your stairway painting is in there. Um, yeah. And people can see it by just going to artistscollectiveofwestport.org and there'll be a link to the virtual gallery. And uh, you can see 87 of our artists are in it including Dale and myself, but, uh, but where else are you, you, you have an exhibit like, I saw the UK, you said you're in a gallery in the- in, Well, I, I have been, having... I mean, right now, um, you know, this year obviously was mm. slow for a lot of exhibits, but um, so I was at the Affordable Art Fair in 18, uh, 2018 and 2019 um, with Eliza Contemporary Art. And um, she's been amazing and while I was there, a gallery saw my work and contacted me and they were in the UK and they wanted to show, cause um, my work was mainly the landscapes in the show. And, um, and they wanted to show my shadow paintings in, in some of their um, exhibits. So that was really cool just mm -hmm. to know that my work was over there and, um, and it was just really fun. And all of a sudden I became an international artist when that <laughs> yeah. happened. So, <laughs> but it's been, it's been a really great experience. And the um, affordable art fair in New York was definitely a highlight of, um, you know, showing my work to a, a broader audience. And um, Eliza Contemporary Art, um, which is Lisa Cooper, has been just really great showing my work and, and getting it out there. So I really uh, appreciate her a lot. Yeah, no, she's been pretty active in the area. So, yeah, she's really, she's great. Um, so I grew up with a, a father who was an artist and, and he, we weren't, my brother and I weren't allowed in his studio because apparently when we were younger, he told us that I tipped over a, his brush, <laughs> thing, his brush jar with water in it. <laughs> And it spilled over something you just finished. <laughs> uh, but I'm wondering, you, now you're a mother and you have daughters. I'm wondering, do you, can you, are they allowed to visit? Uh, first of all, well, two questions. Are they, uh, have they followed your lead in any way in terms of being, uh, being artists? And are, are they allowed in your studio when you're working? Um, you know, it's funny when I'm in the, in a zone and they know they just come in and check in. I mean, they're older now, you know, one's yeah. out of college and one's in college. Um, 
and they kind of know not to, you know, ask me for anything or, or whatever. Um, but sometimes they do come in just to kind of see, you know, what I'm up to. And, um, I, I think they both, uh, really appreciate art. My, my oldest daughter took a, a course in college and, um, you know, they didn't pursue it as a career or anything, but I think that they really know how to appreciate it for sure. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. With seeing it around. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. And they go to all my shows and, yeah, that's nice. and, and I think now that they're getting to be young adults, they now are starting to go to museums on their own and, um, and see like local, you know, shows that are around town, which is great. Yeah, and I'm one of the, you know, I think side effects, obviously, of COVID is people have started either to look inward or more closely to what's around them, what's in front of them, you know, instead of traveling 5,000 miles to see something, you can look around your own town or your house and... Yeah, it's so incredible how many um, talented artists are in our own town, for sure. I mean... And I, I don't think maybe it's the proximity to New York, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's just, you know, when I when I look on that, um, the collective, uh, the virtual gallery that we just did for the artist collective, I'm just blown away by the talent. It really is. I mean, I'm like so humbled to be mm -hmm. in that group, honestly. No, it, yeah, it is spectacular. And it's good to be, I remind myself too. And, and there, so we have 150 members and there's a lot of people that aren't members that are, that are great artists around town. I mean, Westport people always say, oh, I heard that Westport was an artist community. It's, I think it's more vibrant than ever. It's just, you know, maybe. I think so too. And then honestly, you have, you know, and you have like the Westport library who they're trying everything they can to get, um, you know, artists in the community in there showing work um, and supporting artists and always are looking to do new things. And I think, you know, and, you know, the Westport Playhouse and uh, mm -hmm. it's just a great experience to, to partner with all of these, um, you know, nonprofits and, and businesses around town. Yeah, well, especially it's a nice way to wrap it up with thanking the library and Carol who initiated this series of a better <laughs> way to show off art, you know, Westport artists uh, than through these virtual tours, um, which I think will go on even when we can all go to the real studios because they're just kind of more intimate and 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 contained. So right. yeah, and, and I was actually just going to yeah. jump back Please. in just to say that it's been challenging over this year to keep a sense of community and connection. And, and it makes me happy that you feel that we still have that because this year has really yeah. been a tough one. And, and just doing this series was a, a good way for us to sort of keep connected in, in such strange times, you know? Yeah. So. No, I agree. And I can't wait to get back there. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we weren't even able to fully enjoy the the brand new library that much before it uh you know before you had to close so i'm really looking forward to your programming because it's right. really incredible yeah well we're hopeful that well thank you yeah and thank you for having me our pleasure thanks a lot and i'll All get right. back to carol who will <laughs> say goodbye <later. laughs> okay I'll, t I'll do that separate <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much so over the past year, we have recorded over 30 of these artist interviews, and they all live on the library's YouTube page in a playlist called Artists in Residences. And you can find that link on the Westport Library's homepage, westportlibrary.org. Scroll down and you'll see a box on the bottom that will take you right there. Thanks. And I hope to see you at the library again soon. <laughs>